Right, I want to do a quick video that kind of covers one of the questions that comes up in the in the 2396 exam. The 23986 exam will often begin with a uh, section A, about half an hour, where I'll give you a scenario. And what will happen in that scenario is it'll then ask you to work out the reference method, it'll ask you to work out rating factors, it'll ask you to say what table you're going to go, it'll ask you to work out the minimum required conductor size with regards to those rating factors. So you've worked out the I, B, the I, N, the I, Z. And then instead of just working the volts drop out straight away with what you've done, it then asks you a question of volts drop, but kind of like a start fresh question where it asks you, well, what would the minimum required conductor size be if you were just to think of volt drop alone and not everything else you've just done? And, um, and it asks you to do the actual volt drop a few questions later, and it can catch a lot of people out. So... What I want to do is just kind of cover an example. So there's some stuff in the scenario you'll need to see. So one of the things you'll need to obviously know is your load. So let's just say that we have a load of 80 amps. There's 80 amps of demand on a board. We're going to feed a board and it's got 80 amps demand on the board. Let's assume that the length to that board is 27 meters. Now let's think about the volt drop itself now if this is a three phase board so let's call it a 400 volt board and let's call it an xlpe cable so we have an armored three um five core cable or four core cable depending on obviously the arrangement of the earth that means it's going to have a let's go with just five percent let's let's ignore the idea of lighting on this one so let's say it's five percent so five percent would normally be 20 volts but the scenario will probably say that there's already a, a cable feeding that board, so it's not the origin, so there's going to be some loss already. And let's say, for example, they say the volt drop that you already have at that board is 2.5 volts. What that means is our maximum volt drop we can now have on our system is 17.5 volts instead of the 20. And it's important to look for that. So you work with the maximum that you need instead of the maximum that you think is allowed. So that's the maximum, 17.5 volts there. Now if we look at the volt drop formula that we are probably familiar with, the volt drop is equal to the millivolt per ampere per meter value times the design current times the length divided by 1000. We need to transpose that slightly so that we get the millivolt value on its own. So we just need to move stuff either side. So we'll start that by first of all getting rid of the thousand. So we'll do that by multiplying both sides by a thousand. So we multiply this side by a thousand and we multiply this side by a thousand. What that does is this cancels itself out on this side and the thousand has gone over to the right, over to the left there. Now let's get rid of the times IB and the times length, and we'll do that by dividing both sides by IB times length. And that over here will scratch out those to there, meaning the volt drop formula now, or the maximum millivolt value here, is the millivolts is volt drops times a thousand. over IB times length. So if you know the volt drop we are allowed is 17.5 volts, because we said that over here, that's going to mean the top line is 17,500 divided by 80 times 27. So we'll just work that out. We're gonna need to pop up a calculator in a moment. Calculator. So 17,500 divided by brackets 80 times 27 equals 8.1 8.1 millivolt per amp per meter so that's obviously the maximum so we need to look for a number that is less than or equal to 8.1 millivolts when we look at our cable size so if we go to 7671 and we pick that up, so I've gone to table 4D2B because it's, I'm going to keep it at 70 degrees, even though it's uh, an XLPE, we're going to do that 
remember to do that remember to do your calculations to 70 um, because your equipment and everything will be limited to 70 unless for some reason it specifies otherwise so let's get that in here we can see right so we have less than or equal to 8.1 so that is 6.4 which belongs to 6 mil so let's write that down um, I'm gonna just drop that down here 6 mil equals 6.4 millivolts we have 9.5 is obviously too much for 4 and we have 10 mil which is 3.8 10 mil which equals 3.8 millivolts alright so we'll just get rid of that for now make that disappear Boom. so now we want to do is we want to kind of work this out to determine if these conductors will actually give us a volt drop that is going to be okay here so let's just uh, let's look at the six mil so the six mil is a 6.4 millivolts so therefore the volt drop we go back to doing an actual volt drop calculation now is equal to 6.4 millivolts times the design current of 80 times the length of 27 over a thousand equals and we'll get the calculator back out 6.4 times 80 times 27 equals over 1000 13.8 so we get, the other way, 13.8 volts with the 6 mil. Um, and that's obviously lower than the maximum. So the answer to this question would be 6 mil. If you try 10 mil, you're obviously going to have um, even less volts. So just for completeness then, and it's always a good idea to do this for completeness, is let's go back to that table where we found the 6 mil. We calculated that we had a 13, no, we calculated that we had an 8.1 millivolt maximum. So let's look at the cable that's over that, the 9.5, the 9.5 here, that belongs to 4 mil. So let's play with the 4 mil. So 4 mil equals 9.5 millivolts. So technically, we can work this out. And it should be that we prove the 4 mil to be too small. So volt drop equals 9.5 millivolts times 80 times 27 over 1000 equals calculator 9.5 times 80 times 27 equals over 1000 20.52 so we'll just pop that away 20.52 volts so what we've done here is we've proven that the 4 mil is definitely too small we've proven that the 6 mil we've just considering of the size of the conductor itself and not if the 6 mil is okay for carrying the load for the method of installation we're just looking at we have a 17.5 volt maximum let me just change the color to highlight some bits here we have a 17.5 volt maximum and we've determined through a little transposition that we needed an 8.1 millivolt or less value which we identified would be achievable on as little as 6 mil, not 4. And that 6 mil achieved 13.8, which is lower than the maximum of 17.5. So with that question, we can say that the 6 mil would have been adequate as a minimum required live conductor size to achieve or be within the maximum volt drop value. Have a little play with that, and as I as I showed you here, always kind of play devil's advocate and try the one that suggests it wouldn't be good enough, because it then helps prove what your working is doing. 
because if you find the, the maximum and then you work up the one next and it proves it actually wouldn't work, it just helps you justify why you've done that calculation. All right, um, if this is helpful, if you'd like more stuff like this and other examples of thermal withstand calculations or anything like that, then just let me know and we can crack on with more just in this simpler format. Let me know what you want. While I figure out how to stop recording this. There we go. Bye.